In this lecture, we are going to derive quite a stunning result. It will be so surprising that you might not believe it. You might think that the result that we will get is meaningless or wrong. But let me tell you beforehand that it is an inver a very important result in mathematics, but also in physics. For example, it appears while studying the Casimir effect during renormalization in quantum field theory. And let me tell you that we will also find the result in quantum field theory, the Casimir effect, but that's a separate video. That's not in this video that we are going to derive it. In this video, we're going to focus on a very interesting result related to complex calculus and it has to do with the, the Riemann zeta function. But what we really want to do here is we want to calculate a contour integral. So we are going to integrate over a contour that I will call gamma, this function f of z, which uh, does not have any discontinuity, any pole, but we divide by e to the minus i 2 pi z minus 1 dz. So the discontinuity is here in the denominator. And in particular, there are infinitely many discontinuities because when z is equal to some integer that we call n, you will see that e to the minus i 2 pi n is equal to 1. Therefore, we get 1 minus 1, and that's a 0, so that's a pole. And these poles are located, are, um, let's say, distributed on the real axis. And we will be interested only in the poles which have a real part equal to, let's say, greater than 0. We have also a pole at n equal to 0 or z equal to 0. And then we have all these poles where z is equal to 1, z is equal to 2, 3, and so on and so forth. So this is z equal to 0. And we are going to choose the following contour. So we are going to go along the imaginary axis, only the part where the imaginary part is greater than 0, and then we are moving around in order to avoid this discontinuity. Then we approach the second pole, we move around it with a small semi-circumference, and then we move towards the, the other pole, and we move around it, in order to avoid it, and so on and so forth, right? So we get this pattern, dot, dot, dot. And in principle, this is quite a complicated contour because there are infinitely many discontinuities here. But the um, reasoning is the same. So we avoid all these poles and then we close the contour with uh, the larger portion of circumference centered around the origin. So this will be the radius capital R and we will let capital R go to infinity, whereas all the radii of the small semi-circumferences will go to zero. And we can call the radius rho. And uh, for example, this will be the kth pole, or um, this will be the pole where z is equal to k. So if we include zero, it will be the k plus one pole, but whatever. And um, we are going to call this contour gamma. So it's this gamma here, and since there is no discontinuity inside this region, the integral will uh, give us uh, zero. And let's split this integral into different parts. So we will have the integral along the imaginary axis. We will have the integral along the larger quarter of uh, circumference. And we will also have the integrals along these uh, small semi-circumferences. We should also keep in mind that we need to integrate along the x-axis and in particular along these straight lines here, 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 and we have to avoid the discontinuities. So there is also these parts, this one here, this one here. Now, this drawing is not really precise. This sketch is not really precise, but you get the idea. As we let the radii of these circumferences go to zero, we will get an integral, or in particular, we will get the principal value of an integral from 0 to infinity of f of x 
divided by e to the minus i 2 pi x minus 1 dx and let me repeat it this is the integral along these uh, horizontal lines here that are interspersed between uh, these uh, poles now this is the part where I'm going to cheat a little bit and what do I mean by that I mean that in this video I will be interested in um, functions f of x which explode let's say that they go to infinity when x grows larger and in particular when the magnitude of z goes to infinity I'm going to assume that f of x goes to infinity or the magnitude of f of z goes to infinity which basically means that this integral here will uh, diverge because it is divided by this quantity which is oscillating so it, this complex exponential will oscillate between 0 and 1 so the denominator can also be close to 0 and it's quite intuitive that this integral here will diverge and basically I'm going to disregard this integral here because I will be interested only in the non-divergent part of the results so I want to show you the non-divergent part of the results and that's why I'm not going to consider this integral here so you can forget the integral along those lines because we will simply disregard the result so you will understand why we get something that will seem surprising or um, meaningless let's say because I'm simply not considering the divergent part of the integral I will try to give you more intuition as we move along let's start from the integral over gamma k so the k semi-circumference this semi-circumference here and also please pay attention to the fact that this first part this um, this is not really a semi-circumference it's a quarter a quarter of a circumference right because it's different from the others but anyway let's consider this one this will be the generic k semi-circumference and we can turn it into an integral from pi to zero over the variable uh, theta which will describe the motion along the semi-circumference and it is an angle here we have f of z will become rho times e to the i theta plus k so we have parameterized our semi-circumference like this z equal to rho e to the i theta plus k then in the denominator we get e to the minus i 2 pi rho e to the i theta plus k minus 1 and then here we have also the differential of z and that is equal to rho i e to the i theta d theta remember that we are also interested in uh, letting rho go to zero and um, we can write this as e to the minus i 2 pi rho e to the i theta times e to the minus i 2 pi k since k is an integer well this will be equal to 1 and also please notice that rho will um, go to zero so we can rewrite this complex exponential as uh, 1 minus i 2 pi rho e to the i theta plus higher order terms and we are not interested in those terms so I have simply considered the series expansion of this term and then if I replace into this uh, integral I have f of rho e to the i theta plus k divided by I will get 1 minus 1 so that will uh, cancel and I will be left with this so I have minus i 2 pi rho e to the i theta rho i e to the i theta d theta so I can 
simplify this a little bit rho with rho e to the i theta with e to the i theta and i with i so i have minus one over two pi and then i let rho go to zero so i also have f of k integral from pi to zero d theta and of course i will get f of k divided by two right and this result holds for each and every one of uh, these uh, small semi-circumferences. Now, I also have to calculate the integral over this first one. So when z is equal to zero, in that case, I can, I, I, so I will find a very similar result. And the parameterization will be quite similar to the one that we used here. So the integral over gamma zero, let's call this a uh, order of circumference gamma zero so i will integrate from pi over two to zero in this case because we start from this point and then i have f of rho e to the i theta divided by e to the minus i two pi rho e to the i theta minus one rho i e to the i theta d theta and now it will be very, very similar, right? I will uh, expand this term. So the denominator here will become minus i 2 pi rho e to the i theta. And I can simplify i with i, rho with rho, e to the i theta with e to the i theta. So I will get minus 1 over 2 pi. And then I will have f of 0 when I let rho go to 0. And then I will have minus pi over 2. So the result is f of 0 divided by 4, right? And then I will be left with uh, two integrals. One is along the larger circumference. This is not really a semi-circumference. This is a quarter of a circumference, right? And this is centered at the origin. And then we will be left with integrating over this uh, imaginary axis. So let's integrate over the larger circumference. Let's call it a circumference, but we know it's a quarter of a, of a circumference. So we integrate from pi over two to zero. And I mean, the, um, the parameterization would be very similar to this one. In that case, let me call the radius capital R, and then I have e to the i theta, we divide by e to the minus i 2 pi capital R e to the i theta minus 1 capital R i e to the i theta d theta. And in this case, we have to be careful because we are going to let capital R go to infinity. So it will not go to zero, it will go to infinity. And we have to make sure that this will give us a finite result. And in particular, I can rewrite this complex exponential like this. e to the minus i 2 pi capital R cosine theta, which is an oscillating term because I still have the imaginary unit and this is all, this is all real. And the cosine of theta will be positive because we are between 0 and pi over 2. but whether this is positive or negative does not affect the result. This is still an oscillating term, which oscillates. So its magnitude is equal to 1. And this term is going to oscillate when we vary theta. And um, if we let capital R go to infinity, this will not explode. Then I have e to the 2 pi capital R sine theta. So we have to pay attention to this one. Because when we let capital R go to infinity, this term will explode. It will go to infinity. The sine of theta is positive because we are between 0 and pi over 2. So let's say this is non-negative. But in uh, let's say for all the other values, which are not theta equal to 0. So for theta equal to 0, this will be equal to 1. But for all the other values, this term will explode. Right? It will go to infinity. And it's still good because it's in the denominator. And if the numerator does not 
grow faster than the denominator, then we can say that this will go to zero as capital R goes to infinity, right? And this is the assumption that we make. So we assume that the numerator, well, it can go also to infinity, it doesn't matter, but it must grow slower than the denominator, which has some kind of exponential growth. If that happens, then we have no problem. And we can say that this integral will give us zero. And then we will be left with the integral over the imaginary axis, which is quite easy to write down. So over here, the integral will be an integral from infinity to zero, f of, so in this case, z will be purely imaginary. So it can be written as i times a real parameter that I will call t. So t will go from infinity to zero, and therefore z will go from i times infinity to i times zero. So we are moving on, we're moving along this uh, imaginary axis. And then we divide by e to the 2 pi times t. So in this case, this will be real because minus i times 2 pi times z, in this case, will give us this uh, real number, 2 pi times t minus 1, and then we have i times dt, like this. And therefore, the result that uh, we get is this one. We know that the sum of all these integrals should give us zero, which means that the integral from zero to infinity of f of i t divided by e to the 2 pi t minus 1 dt times i is equal to, well, we have to sum all these results this one with this one, and remember that this is more than one result because k can be equal to one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. So we get a series. We get that this is equal to f of zero over four plus summation over n from one to infinity of f of n, and we have to divide this by two. So divide by two. And this is the result that we get. Now let's um, use the following function, f of z equal to z to the third power. So we will be interested in this one. And in particular, I will also use this kind of result when f of z is equal to z cubed in another video, but it will not be related uh, directly to complex calculus. It will be a video on quantum field theory, in particular when I talk about the Casimir effect, and I want to talk about it, but it's not about complex calculus, so I will, of course, not delve into the details of that in this video here. But now, let's think about complex calculus, and in particular, let's choose this function, f of z equal to z cubed, and let's see what happens. Well, if I choose this function, the result should be still uh, true, because all these steps that we went through here are still uh, satisfied, if you think about it. Because, yes, it's true that if you replace f of z equal to z cubed, in here you would have r cubed times e to the i theta raised to the third power, right? So we have r cubed times r, which is r to the fourth power. So the numerator goes to infinity. We have r to the fourth, but we also have to divide by e to the two pi r sine theta, right? And this also goes to infinity because we let r go to, inf to infinity and sine theta is, uh, as I said, greater than or equal to zero. So this result diverges only when theta is equal to zero. For all the other values, for all the other values, the exponential in the denominator will prevail over the numerator. So it will be dominant. And therefore, this will go to zero. So you might think it like that. So you should expect that there is no problem when we set f of z equal to z cubed into that formula. Let's see what happens. So we have integral from zero to infinity. Then I have i t cubed 
dt times i divided by e to the 2 pi t minus 1 and this will be equal to f of 0 will be 0 right because this function is 0 when this argument is 0 and therefore we are left with 1 half times the series n from 1 to infinity of n cubed right so you might see so you will see a problem here because this uh, infinite sum well it diverges if you think of it in terms of single variable calculus well of course it makes sense to say this diverges and therefore this integral should also diverge let's uh, rewrite this integral so if you simply calculate i t cubed this is equal to minus i times t cubed and therefore you have minus i times i which is one therefore you can rewrite this in this fashion you have t cubed like this but you should of course remember that we disregarded at the beginning of this lecture an integral which is similar to this one not exactly the same because it was an integral of this kind so if we want to complete this formula we should write plus principal value integral from 0 to infinity f of x which in this case is x cubed divided by e to the minus i 2 pi x minus 1 dx written like this but as i said earlier this integral will diverge it's quite easy to figure out so we are not interested in this divergent part and if you put it on the left hand side of course you will get an equality that is more understandable because on the right here we have something divergent this is also something divergent and the addition of two divergent terms will give you something that can also be finite like like this we will show that this is finite so we will disregard simply disregard this divergent part you should consider this as a way to associate a finite term with a, a divergent series and this is what you get but if you think about it and if you also do the calculations the left hand side does not diver diverge in particular if you think of this of this integral well i have already calculated it in different videos and in particular in a course on the early rise on quantum mechanics but there's also a free video on my youtube channel so you might check it out if you don't know how to calculate integrals of this kind and in particular this kind of integral can be written like this it, it is also equal to 1 over 2 pi to the fourth times the integral from 0 to infinity x cubed dx divided by e to the x minus 1 and this is the, the integral that i have already calculated it is possible to calculate this integral without using complex calculus you will have to use a series so th that's the way that i calculated it so this integral is related to the series n from 1 to infinity 1 over n to the fourth power so you can show that you can relate this integral to this series and in particular this integral is equal to 6 times this series and this series here is equal to pi to the fourth divided by 90 and i showed how to calculate it so i will not do it in this video but it means that you will get a finite result so here you get pi to the fourth over 15 because 15 times 6 gives you 90 and therefore if you multiply this by this what you get is so you get 1 over 2 to the fourth which is 16 times 15 and therefore if you do the calculation you get 1 over 240 and it means that 1 over 240 should be equal to this and basically what this tells you is that this sum from 1 to infinity n cubed is equal to 1 over 120 which is very surprising and very unintuitive but actually there are some theories in uh, 
physics and it is strictly related to mathematics these theories are um, related to renormalization in quantum field theory for example you have renormalization and it is possible to attribute some kind of meaning to this uh, divergent series for example in the so-called casimir effect and this result can be used for the casimir effect and lo and behold it will give you a value which uh, complies with the predictions so i mean this is very strange but it's something that's used and can be derived mathematically and there are ways to motivate this more rigorously this is not the only strange result that you can get so for example you you might have chosen a different function here you might have chosen instead of z cubed you might have chosen z squared and you might have found so you in this in that case you would have found something similar or you might have chosen z to the first power so let's let's do it Let, let's also do that, that thing but this is the result that i wanted to find in this lecture because i will use it while explaining the casimir effect another result that you can get is integral from zero to infinity and then you choose f of z equal to z so f of i t will be equal to i t and i t times i will give you minus one so minus t divided by e to the two pi t minus one dt and this is equal to summation and from one to infinity here you have n and you also get a factor of one half in here and you can do something similar I mean, it is possible to evaluate this integral here it's actually possible to evaluate it it's not complicated and this is equal to minus 1 over 24 which implies summation over n from 1 to infinity n equal to minus 1 over 12 which is mind-boggling very very strange and let me try to motivate this kind of result in a different manner by using some more intuition behind it this can be motivated more intuitively in this fashion for example so let's start from the sum x to the power n and we sum over n from 0 to infinity this is a geometric series and its result is 1 over 1 minus x if the series converges in particular if the absolute value of x is smaller than 1 right and now let's take the derivative on both sides of this equation so you get summation over n from 0 to infinity n times x to the power n minus 1 in particular we can start from 1 here because um, for example when you set n equal to 0 this will be equal to 1 so the first term is equal to 1 so when you take the derivative that will be 0 and you can start from n equal to 1 so the first term would be 1 times x to the power n uh, n minus 1 which is 0 in that case when n is equal to 1 so we get just 1 and on the right hand side we get minus 1 over 1 minus x squared times the derivative of this argument which is 1 minus so the derivative of this is minus 1 so we get a plus and now from here from here what we are going to do is we are going to choose a value for x and the value for x that we are going to choose is x equal to minus 1 which is not something that we can do in principle because we know that the series converges when the absolute value of x is less than 1 but we are going to choose x equal to minus 1 so you can think of that as some kind of limit x is very close to minus 1 not exactly equal to minus 1 but let's think of this in the limit in the limit minus 1 
to the power n minus 1 can, can be equal to 1 or minus 1, depending on, on uh, what is n, n minus 1. So here we get summation n from 1 to infinity, and then I have n, and then I have minus 1 to the power n minus 1. So you can put the minus here, so you get minus 1 over 1 minus minus 1, so plus 1 squared. I have factored out x to the power minus 1, so it's minus 1 to the power minus 1. I have put it here, so I get a minus. So this is minus 1 over 2 squared, so it's 4, minus 1 over 4. And, well, you might think, what shall I do with this? Well, let's start from this uh, series now. n from 1 to infinity, n, so this will be 1 plus 2 plus dot dot dot, all the way up to infinity. And let's subtract 4 times the same series, from 1 to infinity of n. So if we consider this minus this, and by, by the way, let's give a name to this series, this, this will be c, so this is 4c. Therefore, if, if you subtract c minus 4c is equal to minus 3 times c, and what you get, if you think about it, these terms will have to be subtracted by 4 times the same term. So you have, so the first term that I will write is 1, this 1 here, then I have minus 2. Let me explain. And in particular, let's write some terms here. So 4c is equal to 4 plus 8 plus, then I have 3 times 4, which is 12, dot, 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 right? So I have 2 minus 4, which is minus 2, and then I'm going to write plus 3, which, uh, which is here. And then I am going to write 4 minus 8, so I have minus 4. And you understand the pattern, so I have plus 5, and then I have, I have 6 minus 12, which is minus 6, so and so on and so forth. But how can I write this uh, quantity here? So here I have plus dot dot dot. So this can be written as a summation over n from 1 to infinity n. And then here I have minus 1 to the power n minus 1. I can write it like this, right? Because when n is equal to 1, I must get a plus. So I have 1 minus 1, 0, so minus, minus 1 to the power 0 is 1. And then when n is equal to 2, I get a minus, and so on and so forth. But what is this? We found that, actually, we found that uh, in here, let me put back minus 1 here, so I get a plus here and a plus here. Therefore, this is equal to 1 over 4. This is 1 over 4, right? And this is equal to minus 3 times c. So this is minus 3c, and therefore c is equal to minus 1 over 12, which is exactly the result that we got by using complex calculus. So you see that we obtain exactly the same formula here, this formula here. And the intuition behind this is that we are really calculating these summations, these infinite summations, in the limit. So we are getting closer and closer to the edges where, let's say, to the, to the boundaries, where this summation will not hold anymore, but we are getting closer and closer. And so we can attribute some kind of meaning to this uh, quite surprising result. Now, let me conclude uh, this lecture by summarizing the main result that we found. And I will also add the final comments. In particular, we found that the integral from 0 to infinity of f of i t 
divided by e to the 2 pi t minus 1 dt times i can be written as 1 half summation with n going from 1 to infinity f of n plus f of 0 divided by 4 and in general you should consider also a divergent part which can be written as principal value of the integral from 0 to infinity f of t divided by e to the minus i 2 pi t minus 1 dt so this is the general formula let's say now let me add that if f of i t or in general f of z is an even function z to the power 2 for example or z to the power 4 and so on and so forth so if this power here is uh, even then we should try to be careful because if we put this function there we get integral from 0 to infinity and then I have i t squared dt divided by a to the 2 pi t minus 1 then I have i and i t squared will be minus t squared so I get minus t squared equal to and then f of 0 will be 0 whereas here you get 1 half summation from 1 to infinity n squared and then you still have this uh, divergent integral here but here you should try to be careful because you can see that this integral here is real so the result here will belong to r and here you have the imaginary unit whereas this is real right so it means that this should not be equal to this, should not be equated to this. And one way to tackle this is to say, well, this is imaginary, this is real, and therefore it's as if I can put this integral here inside this divergent term. So if I do that, so if I put this uh, quantity, which is a uh, finite so you can show that it's finite but it's purely imaginary here you will get zero and here you will have this divergent part and one way to tackle this is to say well this emission should be equal to zero by using the same generalizations that we used earlier because it cannot be equal to something which is uh, purely imaginary since this is real and indeed this is defined as the Riemann zero function of uh, minus two there is also a factor of one half which is the same factor here and zero of s in general is equal to the summation over n from one to infinity one over n to the power s so this is how the Riemann zero function is defined and this function is defined to be zero when uh, the argument is equal to minus two in particular this holds whenever this uh, power here is even so this kind of uh, reasoning let's say should be applied only when z is um, raised to the power two or four or six or eight only in those cases whereas you will find the correct result if you have an odd power here.